So basically what I do is I'm the Jenkins Polk Campner Director of Preventive and Alternative Medicine at the University of Michigan Medical Center. And what that really means is there's an endowment that was actually created by patients. They donated a whole bunch of money to set up somebody in urology and in prostate cancer to look at all those things that people generally don't look at. So look at diet, dietary supplements, um, other mechanisms where we could possibly fight cancer and prostate cancer. So what I really do is I, I help patients with lifestyle and dietary supplements and their preventive and, and treatment issues, especially when it comes to a, a consult, and I've been doing that for about 15 years. Dr. Moyad, you have built a reputation as an expert on alternative forms of prostate cancer prevention and management. Why did you become so interested in this field? What got me interested was a paper I did in college. I was a senior in college and I published a paper that was on cottonseed oil. And I thought it was fascinating that something in nature could be uh, effective for one thing and also could be dangerous in too high a dosage. And the second thing that got me interested, I think, uh, my young, my cousin at a young age died of breast cancer, and after she died, uh, we were inundated by questions about lifestyle and diet and supplements and what can people do. You've been impacted yourself by cancer, and I realized people wanted this, and people wanted someone to work full time. So out of something awful, we tried to create something good. At the PCRI conference and other meetings recently, you have been talking about the role of statins in the prevention and management of prostate cancer. Can you give us a brief overview about who should be considering statins as a treatment to prostate cancer and why? I wrote several statin papers going back now five years ago and I still remember getting mail that said, what are you doing? What are you talking about? There's gonna, what is, how can this be relevant? And so I feel a little bit vindicated because this has become such a hot topic. And the reason I was always excited about statins was, first of all, there was no bias there. I had never worked with a company, a statin company. I had never been paid to talk about statins. It was, it, we, we stumbled upon it from actually a patient who donated money for us to look at some things like that. So I think it was a very pure research, research concept. The second thing was we were looking at a pill that had such a great track record of being heart healthy and reducing the risk of dying young from cardiovascular disease. And what I always try to tell patients is whatever turns out to be heart healthy, 99% of the time turns out to be prostate healthy. So if you're ever going to get good guidelines or good advice on your prostate health, follow the heart health guidelines. They always tend to be right for the prostate. Well, what was most right for the prostate in terms of a pill was a statin. So we started looking at the statin data, then other people started looking at it too. And now what we found here now in, in 2009 is we have five papers just in the past three years, not from us, from different authors around the world, that are showing that statins may not only reduce the risk of you getting prostate cancer, but more importantly, may reduce the risk of dying from the disease. That's what I find so compelling, that it might reduce the risk of the progression of the disease. But what I tell patients all the time is this, let's just pretend we're wrong. Let's just say statins do nothing for prostate cancer. Well, then I apologize that we reduce the risk of the number one cause of death in men. In other words, you're still the winner. I like recommendations whereby if the doctor was wrong, it was still right for the patient. So we're talking about statins and cholesterol, it may not end up fighting prostate cancer. I think it will be shown to do that. But even if it doesn't, at least we're reducing the risk of the number one cause of mortality in men around the world. There have as yet been no large prospective randomized trials testing the effectiveness or the safety of statins in the prevention or the treatment of prostate cancer. Do you expect to see such trials developed? And it may have been too late to do a trial because there's so many people on it, it's almost like candy. So how do you really tell a bunch of people they're going to get a placebo when they could easily go get a statin? So we may have lost that window. However, I don't believe we've lost that window for patients, for example, that have a rising PSA after treatment. We could do that study. Uh, there have been numerous people who put in grants. I think that we are a few years off, but we will get that randomized trial. But you know what? Who cares? That's my opinion. If we, if we get it or we don't, um, and again, if I can reduce the risk of you dying young and, and improving your quality of life, um, I think it's, it makes complete sense. As an expert on this topic, what are you doing personally today to lower your own risk for a diagnosis of prostate cancer? I had a vitamin D blood test, and my vitamin D is extremely low. And I think that every prostate cancer patient should at one time or another have a vitamin D blood test just to see where they are, because this is so important for bone health and perhaps heart health and perhaps with practically prostate health follows the same line of statins. Vitamin D doesn't reduce your risk of prostate cancer or the progression of the disease. I apologize, it reduces your risk of a bone fracture. In other words, it's still a good thing. So I take about 1,000 international units of vitamin D3 daily. 
I actually take a statin even though I have normal cholesterol and when I remember to take it, which is several days a week. And basically, <clears throat> when I remember, I take a cheap, low-dose children's multivitamin. Why children's? <coughs> Excuse me. Why children's? Because the dosages in these multivitamins are becoming too high. They have lost all sense of control, in my opinion. And the only way to get a multivitamin that's low dose and safe that makes sense now, looking at the research, actually should come from a children's formula. It's, uh, so I'm not a big fan of adults taking adult multivitamins. It's not a popular idea, but I think in the end we'll find out that that, that is probably the safest move. Have you had a baseline PSA? I have not had a baseline PSA. I'm not old enough for that. I do go yearly. I get my cholesterol. I get all the other uh, risk factors taken care of. Um, I would say that I'm six years off from my first test. And it would be quite nice, though, if we did something dramatic in prostate cancer so that I would never need a PSA. So I'm six years away from cure, hopefully. And so the time is running out. I'm getting closer to 50. You have a new book coming out. Tell us about that. The new book that came out and hit Amazon, that will come out hopefully later, is called Dr. Moyed's uh, No BS uh, Diet Advice Book, Health Advice Book. And it goes through all the different pills, all the different lifestyle changes, um, and their potential benefits, and which ones you should spend money on, and which ones you shouldn't spend money on. And so that's been out for a couple months, and it's done quite well, and I'm happy. The book with Ian Thompson hopefully is yet to come. What do you think is the most exciting thing coming in the near future? Actually, the thing that I'm most excited about, but it's not going to happen yet for a few months, is we have, our research team, is slated to do the next vaccine trial, uh, the Provenge vaccine trial, in patients with earlier stage disease. And that's scheduled to, it should go in 2010. And I have, we've literally been working five years to get this trial to happen. We've been working so hard to get the trial to happen that I've had to actually come up with private funding to pay for it. So it's a really great story that I hopefully will have a very happy ending. But there's no question, personally speaking, what I'm most excited about is testing this vaccine earlier and earlier in men with prostate cancer. I think we're going to see something.